Hi, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hello, my name is Tanya and I'm a recent UX design graduate. And right now I am deep in the middle of job search and let me tell you, it's an exciting time but it's also kind of an overwhelming time. I've had some interviews and design challenges that I've been working on. So for this video, I kind of just wanted to have some fun with design and play with some UI. I'm not an expert in UI, I'm just here to have a good time. So if you want to see how I recreate this, and I'm hoping that it's any good because I haven't started yet, let's get into it. I've already done some initial work on this, so to begin I went to a really cool website called sharpen.design which generates design prompts for you for inspiration and you get stuff like this. And while I'm sure the Illuminati is just dying for me to help them out with their digital presence, I think I'm going to go with the next one which was a helpful app for you five years ago. And five years ago, I was in university and my biggest concerns were like getting my assignments in on time and replacing my roommate's cheese before she realized that I'd eaten it. So I think for this design challenge, I'm going to create a task app. So what I've already done is I've gone into Notion and if you haven't used Notion yet, get on it because it's pretty amazing. And I have created a little workspace called task app and I've just jotted down an overview that has just very high level goals I want a user to be able to easily view and add their daily tasks and I've written down what features I want. So I'm thinking that I want to design three screens. One is going to be the task view, one is going to be add a task and then the third one is going to be a calendar view. So I've also made a separate little page for each of these just with some features that I've jotted down that I think might be useful. So for example, in my task list screen, I want each task to show up as a card. I want the user to be able to check it off and maybe have some sort of animation in there. I could maybe include the percentage of tasks that I've completed that day. Do I want to have a to do and done screen and so on and so on. So once I had some features down, I just went to pen and paper and sketched out a general idea of kind of what I want this to look like. So I've got my task list view here with my tasks as cards. And then I'm thinking for the add a task, I want like a pop-up modal kind of thing going. And then finally my calendar view is just gonna have an actual calendar or maybe days of the week, but I'm not sure yet. So this is kind of gonna be my blueprint that I'm keeping on the side here. And now I'm gonna head over to Adobe XD, which is just my number one. I just, I know that Figma and Sketch are all really powerful, but Adobe XD just has like a special place in my heart. So jumping into a voiceover because apparently I have the simultaneous design and narration ability of an entire sloth. So my first course of action was to get my low fidelity wireframes down into place. So for this I was just hitting the R key on Adobe XD to draw up some rectangles that would work as my bottom navigation and my cards. And then I hit the T key to get down some text. You know at this point I was really just more concerned with translating whatever I had down on my paper sketches and making sure that the spacing of all my elements looked right before I started adding any detail to them. For my calendar screen, I actually went over to my plugins where I downloaded a calendar plugin. And it's a pretty cool time saver because you can input how large you want your calendar to be, and then your start date, and how you want to present your days of the week, and then it creates a calendar for you. And this is way easier than having to design one up by yourself. You can just make changes to this one instead. Of course, at this point, my laptop pretty much said, alright, I'm gonna head out because I was running my design software and screen recording at the same time, so if you see any lagging or cuts in the footage, I'm so sorry. So while we're on the topic of plugins, if you haven't already, you should really check out the plugin called Icons for Design. Um, it's incredible. You can basically choose from a library of icons just by inputting a keyword. So for example, I put in home and then I got the home icons from a few sets like iOS and Metro. Depends on the icon what sets you get. And I've actually used a few of these home icons before, so I went with this home icon just to be different and then I regretted it later. But anyway, this is by far my most used plugin for Adobe XD. Um, I then went on to choose some other icons for my calendar screen and a stat screen and an account screen, which I think would be useful categories for my user to keep up with their tasks and see how she's doing. And then I also went ahead and I created an add button in the center of my navigation because I want that to be my user's primary action is to add a task. At this point, I went in with my Adobe XD app on my phone. If you haven't downloaded it yet, it's very useful. It basically works as a mirroring app. And so whatever you are designing on your laptop screen, you can connect to your phone and view it as 
a phone screen. This is really useful I think for sizing because sometimes when you're working on your laptop things all look like the correct size and then you put them into your phone and you're like I can't see a thing. So at this point I was just making sure that everything was sized and spaced correctly. I don't think you're going to be able to see it but it's basically exactly what I have on my screen shows up on my phone and it's a really useful way to just make sure that everything's looking correct and it also works for prototyping if you have prototype things to be clickable on your laptop they're going to be clickable on your phone very useful okay so now that i've got the basic elements down and an idea of my spacing i went ahead with my card design I took up my borders and I added a shadow and I love working with shadows but I definitely learned about them the hard way. I remember my first project ever had shadows everywhere and they were super harsh and just not okay at all but I've learned now that softer is oftentimes better so I did this by changing the colour of the shadow from black to grey and then I increased the blur on it so it wouldn't look as hard. You'll notice that I made my first rectangle element into a component by hitting the component key on the right so that whatever I did to that first original card would happen to every card that I copied from it. That's also a real time saver. So next I started adding in the text that I wanted to be within the cards and I wanted to pay attention to the hierarchy of information here. So I wanted the title of the task to be largest and in bold and then slightly smaller but still in bold I wanted to be the time. I think this information should be most highlighted because it's the most important thing that the user needs to know at a glance, like, oh, I have an assignment due at 4, for example. So underneath that, in regular type, I added a description where the user could leave like some notes, for example, like handed in at this building or whatever it is. And then I kind of wanted to do like a tag thing underneath where the user could decide if it was like a work task or a school task or a fun task, and then they could like organize their tags in that way. So next I added my to do and done tab so that the user would be able to keep track of their list with one tap. But at this point I should probably put out that this is just a fun UI design exercise with Dribbble. If this were for a real project I'd probably have a ton more research and user discovery but this is just fun. So at this point I was kind of embracing using text fills instead of lines so I changed up my input fields and I also added a time input to go next to the date and then I made today the default date to cater for like my busy on the go user which is one of the things that I've written down in my notion page. I added a drop down icon on the side which is called a chevron, it took me ages to figure that one out at first and then I added a fill to my primary button and added a shadow to my pop-up modal and I wanted the shadow to fall above the modal, usually shadows fall below so to do this I just changed the value on my y-axis to negative so that it would fall above. I also rounded out the corners a bit just to mimic that iOS modal kind of look. So next I started editing my actual content to make it more realistic and at this point I would say to avoid using lorem ipsum wherever possible in your designs. Using actual text might take a little bit longer to fill in but it really does give the product more context and helps the user like understand the purpose of the product a lot easier. Okay, color. As you can see from our final outcome in the beginning, we didn't do anything super crazy with color and I actually found myself really dating the black that the icons came in as a default. And I don't think I've ever used black as my main color before. And it kind of gave me Figma vibes, so I wanted to go with it and see what happened. And I thought instead of using another strong color to go with the black, I just go the complete opposite direction and use pastels. So Bear with my process here because I just chose some basic pastels and then found their darker equivalents. I know it looks so ugly, but I played around and I got this as a final result. At this point I started second guessing the black because it's not a color that you see all too often with app design, so I chose this purple periwinkle instead to use as my main color and I compared the two. At the end of the day I still preferred the strength of the black so I went with that instead, but you can let me know if you prefer the other, I will not be offended, this is just for fun. And then I added a few finishing touches like a filter icon so that my user could organize her tasks by the tags. And then I also added my top iOS element to all of my screens just to make it look like a little bit more realistic. And now it's time for some of that classic dribble presentation. And everything looks fun and artsy and like totally unrealistic but no one thinks about it too much because we just want eye candy. So to start I drew a new rectangle with rounded borders that I put behind each screen. And that is what I used to emulate an iPhone screen without having to use a mock-up. And, and then I drew a 1600 by 1200 rectangle that I was going to use as my background, as my actual artboard. And I sized it down a bit to fit my screens a little bit better, and then I grouped each of my screens and moved them down onto my rectangle. So this is what I'm going to be posting to Dribble now. So for the background, I knew that I wanted to incorporate that pastel business that I had going on earlier. And I wanted to use some kind of gradient, which I haven't used before yet. So I changed the fill of my background rectangle from a solid color to a radial gradient and then I selected one of my existing colors for each part of my gradient. 
and I started with the pink but it was just really overwhelming so I went with the bluish purple as my primary background color and then I used the pink as the smaller color within the circle of the gradient. I moved my circle to the corner for a little bit of an asymmetric look and that's basically my background done. And then for the final touches, I was thinking about creating some dimension within my artboard so I thought about how a new task would look if it was animated. I was picturing it kind of coming in from the left and it would slide in. So I moved my top new task over to the left to kind of give that illusion and I think that just helped to create some movement to the overall artboard. And I mean, I think that's about it. Oh, this was a lot longer than I thought it would be. You know what, this is a good time. I'm glad that I did it. I have something to add to my drawer page now. If you have made it this far, I'm thoroughly impressed. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think I could have changed. Let me know what you liked and didn't like. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, subscribe, and I will see you in my next one. Bye.